Hello, it's this one verse, and today I am finally gonna do the read so lit tag. I say finally because I was tagged probably last year by in Jerry of Onyx pages and I wasn't really in a place where I was doing tags at the time. I was really just doing TBRs. I was just like posting once a month. I felt like I was barely on here. So I didn't get the memo that I was tagged until really late. And when I got the memo, it was like not Black History Month anymore. Now I do have the bandwidth to do the tag, so I'm going to do it. This tag was created by Dee Dee over at Brown Girl Reading, like in conjunction with her Read So Lit Instagram challenge to celebrate Black History Month in the U.S. And I'm just going to get into the questions. So the first question is, what books are you looking forward to reading this February in honor of Black History Month? So this month I was trying to get through The Killing Moon by N.K. Jemisin, Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson, and Minion by L.A. Banks. Killing Moon I had a discussion with Neeks for. Year of the Witching was another buddy read. I buddy read that with Sophia over at Fantasy Book Addict. I'm going to try and do a standalone review at some point. Also reading that with Solar Powered Afrofuturism Slow Reading Group. You're welcome to join us for that. It's just going to be like kind of a chill Zoom call about it. I'll be coming up with questions about the book. That's not going to happen until October, but I'll throw the event right in the description box for those that are interested. And then I'm reading Minion by L.A. Banks for a live show on the Cerebral Hedonist channel, Harley's channel, February 20th. So that's what I read this month. In terms of like what I want to do going forward, like it is Black History Month, so I do want to focus on either reading like more nonfiction history stuff or like sci-fi fantasy classics by Black authors. Like if you're not familiar, Nisi Shaw has a really good couple lists up called a Crash Course to Black Science Fiction where they sort of talk about genre distinctions and black authored science fiction through the ages and they just kind of give a book about every decade, every two decades or so since like I think 1850 is the earliest. And it would be cool at one point to maybe do like a read along or something where I work through the list with like either viewers or like other people who are interested in doing it. But I do want to read more stuff published before like the 90s and just like history and theory stuff to like understand more so what's going on and what I'm reading. Okay, next question is cite and talk about a classic read to lit book published before 1970 that you love. For that I'll say Mules and Men by Zora Neale Hurston. Zora Neale Hurston is well known for her novels but she's also a very important folklorist. She took down a lot of folklore from sort of the southeastern part of the United States. Like, it's very easy for me to get her stuff from the library. It's not locked up in some academic library somewhere. I think Zora Neale Hurston has an approach that's very unique because the way that she tells it, it's also kind of like a memoir. Like she tells how she convinced people to tell her these stories and, like, her process and all that. And she just kind of got into, like, some wild scenarios. Like, I think there was a bit in here where she talked about, like, someone starting a knife fight at a juke joint. I think it was published in like the 1930s. Next question is, what Read So Lit book would you like to see adapted to film? And for that, I would say Good House by Tanana Reeve Du. I know Tanana Reeve Du, I think, has some filmmaking experience. I know she wrote a lot of stuff that I feel like didn't see it to the to the screen, but I know she's also now working with Shudder to make a like black horror anthology series on their streaming service. Good House is a horror story about this haunted house in the Pacific Northwest that an African-American woman inherits and like the weird things that happen there and I think it would be creepy and like a good watch and it seems like people get more excited about books when there's like a movie or a tv show or something that they can watch and then there's like that excitement kind of transfers over to the original source material. Next question, show and talk about one of your favorite read so lit books by a male author. But I'm gonna say Taste of Honey by Kai Shanti Wilson. I consider it a fantasy romance it is primarily about a romantic relationship, and it ends with a happily ever after or a happy for now. The circumstances around that are kind of fraught and kind of difficult. Like, I don't know if there's too much, like, suffering in it for it to be a romance. There is, like, homophobia. There's neglect. There's physical abuse. But that is how I think of it. It stomped on my heart. Uh... I chuckled, I got weepy, it made me feel all the things, and it is one of my favorite books ever. This is a book I read, and 
I was just like, where has this been all my life? Like, I need more writing like this. Kai Shanti Wilson, he's mostly written novellas, but like, I think that his contributions are huge. Like, his writing is beautiful, it's very poetic. And just like, if we're talking like black gay characters in fantasy, like, he's one of the only authors I can name who's like written that at one of the big publishing houses. And so I get really happy when I see people comp his work. Like, I know Ebony J. Dunbar comped his work for Stone and Steel. I know Zen E. Rockland comped his work for an upcoming novellas of theirs. Flowers for the Sea. I feel like P. Jelly Clark said he was influenced by him once. I can't remember when or where, though. Next question is, what Read So Lit new releases are you excited about this year? So there are a lot. I'm going to try and keep it brief so that we're not here all day. But there's Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. This is a YA horror about a black boy who goes to this elite, predominantly white boarding school, and he can see ghosts. I recently learned the word Achillean, which is like referring to relationships between two men or two masks. That's exciting. So I don't think there's many of those books by black authors writing speculative fiction in general. And then next is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. This is a YA fantasy I hear at Sapphic. It heavily features plants, which I love. I love botany facts. Cover looks great. And there's Fire for the Sea by Zinni Rockland, which I kind of mentioned earlier. I've heard this comp is like a mashup of The Deep by River Solomon and A Taste of Honey by Kai Shanti Wilson. And I love both those books, so I'm just so ready for this. I read, what was it, Night Sun by this author, and I like that. That was a horror about werewolves and an abusive relationship. And I don't know much about this other than it's a novella coming from Tor, and I'm just, like, so ready for it. Like, I don't think there's even a cover out right now. Then there's Me Moth by Amber McBride. This is going to be a novel in verse about a girl who comes from a line of hoodoo practitioners who goes with a friend searching for ghosts. I'm trying to branch out. Really the only author who writes in verse that I read a lot of right now is Elizabeth Acevedo. And so I'm trying to, you know, expand. And I'm excited to read more stories featuring hoodoo. Then there's Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. I don't know if I have to say a whole lot for this one. It's sapphic by P. Jelly Clark, who I... Love his writing. Received an arc, so excited to get to that. Then there's Bacchanal by Veronica Henry. This is a horror, grim fantasy set Depression Era South. This is another one I got an arc for. Very excited for. I heard about this with the blogger, Miss WC Reader, and if you don't follow her, I really recommend it. I feel like she has a really good eye for finding books that don't get a lot of hype, and I think she's a great blogger. Then there's Root Magic by Eden Royce. This is a story about two Gullah Geechee twins who are learning root magic. This is another pick for Solar Power at Afrofuturism Soul Reading Group, the book club that I'm in. I'm excited for it. I really love Eden Royce's short stories. Um, I've heard nothing but good things. Then there's The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. This is a sapphic North African inspired adult fantasy. I've loved a lot of Clark's short stories, and so this is another one I have an arc. I'm excited to get through it. Tammy tries to read, had a good review of it up on Goodreads, and so I'm hoping to really enjoy this one. Then there's Sorrowland by River Solomon, which is about a pregnant woman who escapes a cult. This is like a gothic fiction from what I've heard. It's River Solomon, so I'm sure there's going to be queer characters in there. I think it's going to lean more towards the horror, but there's been like a lot of mystery about this one, and I love everything River Solomon has written. They're just very introspective, they're very thoughtful. I really love the things that they write. And then finally, there's Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. This is a middle grade fantasy about a young girl whose older brother goes missing and she has to navigate this like bureaucratic magical government to get to him. And I've just heard great things from reviewers. It was one that I've been looking forward to for a while. Next question is, a lot of us diehard fans refer to Toni Morrison as the queen. Which writer do you feel like could be the next queen in African-American literature? There's only one Toni Morrison. There cannot be another. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Because for me, not only is Toni Morrison, like, a wonderful author, she's also, like, a great editor. Like, she pushed to get so many other influential Black authors published, like Toni Kate Bombera, June Jordan, Lucille Clifton, Angela Davis, Muhammad Ali, Huey Newton those novels and also those biographies and like political treatises and I don't know if there's anyone else who's like 
quite doing what she did. I don't really know what the literary fiction scene is like. I don't know if there really is an equivalent for her in any of like the SFF circles currently. It was like, I don't know, maybe Tanana Reeve Du or Linda Addison. They've both been around for at least a decade at this point, and they both seem to, to take a very active role in mentoring other authors. They're both very highly awarded, but you know, Toni Morrison's Toni Morrison, and there, there's only going to be one of her. Next question is, what's the last book by an African-American author you read, loved, and gave four or five stars? And that is going to be An Arc of Conductors by Nicole Glover. This is a historical fantasy <laughs> murder mystery set in Reconstruction era Philadelphia. I really enjoyed it. There's a lot going on. I'm going to have a review up by the time this is posted. And I'm very excited that I reached out to Nicole Glover asking if she'd be okay being interviewed on my channel and she agreed. So I'm expecting to have her on my channel April 3rd for an interview. So stay tuned for that. I haven't seen a lot of hype for The Conductors and I hope that changes. It's a fun murder mystery with a very lively protagonist and like this really cool magic system. But there's also parts of it that are very like introspective. Uh, next question is show some beautiful books by African American authors. Always gotta plug it. Anytime you ask me for a nice cover or some nice art, I'm gonna plug it. Magnifique Noir by Brianna Lawrence, specifically the second volume. I adore the cover on this one. Gotta love black girls in fighting poses with some pretty colors. This is it for me. Then another one is Two Moon Stories by Crystal A. Smith. This one, I just love the cover because it's a collage. I love the mix of like fabrics and like these pearly like materials. It's like this soothing night scene that I feel like just really wraps up like the vibe of the short story collection. Like I feel like this short story collection is soft and tender and it's also like dainty and frilly and also about like darkness in the night. And then the last one is Libra Season by Superhimbe. This is a poetry collection. I think I would like to try and do a standalone review at some point, but it is a fantasy poetry collection that is partially autobiographical. And it kind of chronicles their growing up, they're exploring their sexuality, their dating life, and it's just very lush, beautiful poetry. And I feel like that that's reflected in the cover. And like the whole thing is just so aesthetic, like the fonts that are used for the titles. And there's like quotes throughout. I just think it is a very pretty book in general. Next question is, Black History Month is about its people. What book would you like to read to learn more about African Americans? I also have this like encyclopedia called Creating Black Americans, African American History and its Meaning 1619 to the Present by Nell Irvin Painter. This is one that I had for a class in college. I never read it all the way through and I would like to. It's kind of like an overview of the art and social and cultural movements happening for African Americans from 1619 to whenever the book was published. And it was definitely informative, like the first like skim through I did through this class. So I'm sure that when I'm doing like a more concentrated deep dive, I'm gonna learn a whole lot more. The next question is show what you're currently reading from a read to lit TBR. Um, this is Thursday, February 18th, and I got a live in two days on the 20th for Minion by LA Banks. And I'm like halfway through, and so I am trying to get through that. I'm Confident that I can. It's a very quick book. Last prompt is to tag five or more people to do this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do five. And like by the time I get this out, Black History Month's probably going to be over. So if you want to wait until next year to do it, feel free. But I'm going to tag Read, Love, Listen, Fanny J.O., Maya vs. Words, Emma Ray Empowered, and Dreaded and Reddit. Um, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to discuss anything I mentioned in the video, please comment down below. If you live in a country that has a Black History Month, how do you try to observe it? Or if you're from a predominantly Black country that has like an Independence Day or something that invites you to think about the history, how do you observe that? If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It's a good way to stay up to date with me and my reading activities. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Take care of yourselves.